Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Game It Out. I am Josh, and we are back with more Night of the Blood Moon. Can't get enough of this game. Thought it might be fun to do a little challenge. Last time I did actually finally beat the game, which is why the moon over there is kind of fragmented like it is. Except this time, I'm gonna do it with the boomerang and no extra items. I'm not gonna pick up any orbs I find, and every time I can upgrade stuff, I'm not gonna do it. This is like the equivalent of like a buster-only run in Mega Man, where you can't pick up any extra items. The exception to this, and I'm gonna cut myself some slack here, is if I accidentally pick up an orb. I'm not gonna worry too hard about it. I'm just gonna not make it a point to continuously try to build orbs because I don't want to be going through this and just like I accidentally swipe something and now I've got an orb and now I have to start the run over. No, this is for fun, so we'll see. Last time we did blue for the color, so let's do red this time. Quick refresher, you have to go through various stages taking out each and every creature, which will then allow you to go to the next area. We've got two stages that are basically for the bedroom and then we move on from there. So this is the screen where we would normally assign some kind of upgrade, but we're gonna skip everything. Here we are are on stage number two of the, what I've been calling the children's bedroom. I'm gonna try and play it, oh whoops, since I'm not upgrading my boomerang, one of the dangers I run into is I can lose my boomerang if it like clips on a wall like that, and then I have to go pick it up, which I personally think is gonna be fine, we will see. I feel like I really peaked last time by beating the game with the bomb, because the bomb is one of these weapons in this game that like for clearing rooms is really good, but it's not so good at taking care of the end boss in this game. You're better with a weapon that you can sort of like spam over and over again, which you can't do with the bomb because it takes up ammo. I'm gonna explain a little bit more about this game if you haven't seen any of my other Blood Moon videos or haven't seen any videos on the game at all. Here we are in what I've been affectionately calling the garden. So Night of the Blood Moon is a twin stick shooter. You have to go around, you are a nightmare creature thingy and you go around and you have to kill all the cute things. That's essentially the gist of it. The developer of this game is very active and it's pretty awesome. There's been a lot of improvements to the game since it launched not too long ago. And overall I've just really enjoyed the loop of the game. That's why I keep coming back and playing it. I think it's just a lot of fun. It requires, I've done a lot of, whoa, whoa, I've done a lot of runs. You know what I'm not using, by the way, is my dodge. So yeah, combat wise, you've got melee, which is my little swing here. You have an array of ranged weapons you can choose from, from the boomerang to a crossbow to a bomb. And there's another thing called the hook shot, which uh, I've heard people are really good with it, but I simply cannot cope with it very well. I haven't played much with it, so maybe I'll tackle that one next. But you basically just go from stage to stage, trying to clear out all of the cute enemies until you get to the final boss. Each area has its own set of difficulties, like this one, you know, there's some stages that are in the dark, like right now, and there's these creatures hiding in bushes. There's these orbs we can pick up, and if we stack these orbs, they can do special things like give us more movement speed, or give us more health, or allow us to gain more experience, all kinds of stuff like that. But for this run, we're not gonna get any of that stuff. So here we are in what I've been calling the music room, or the music hall. There's a bunch of, obviously, a lot of musical-themed instruments that you have to watch out for. As like anything else, there are two stages worth of this that we have to do. And in the second stage, we have to fight the conductor, who is the first boss you'll see in the game. And it's funny, I actually don't think the conductor himself is that hard, but it's kind of the, ma for me, it's kind of the make or break stage for if I think a run is going to go decently enough. I feel like it might be different since I'm not trying to get any items whatsoever. Theoretically, a little bit more skill based than hoping to get like a good roll of items. Trying to avoid these guys because they snipe you, but I can dodge out of the way usually like that because I have no hope of upgrading, which you can normally do from the skill tree between levels. From this thing here, you can usually upgrade stuff. The ones I usually use are this one right here, which adds one health point, just so I can stack health by the time I get to the end. Every weapon you use can be upgraded once. In this case, the boomerang can be something where it no longer will drop. My favorite is the bomb, because normally you can take splash damage from the bomb, which uh, gets you killed really fast. But with the upgrade for the bomb, you have bomb immunity, which means you can just spam that thing, provided you can get the ammo for it. Oh, dang it. I just accidentally picked up a damage orb. Again, we're not going to sweat it too hard, because sometimes those things are really hard not to pick up. So on this level, once again, is the conductor. The conductor stays asleep until he's otherwise disturbed by something or, you know, if you hit him or whatever. But what he does is he takes all these musical instruments and sort of enhances their abilities. They can fire a lot more uh, note projectiles at you. So I don't think he ever officially woke up. There's two things you can do to destroy the conductor, which is just run up and hit him. Or you can kill all the musical instruments, at which point he actually can't do anything. Since all of the other soldiers are defeated, all I do is just beat him up. This is an egg that will unleash a creature for me. It'll help me in some various way, be it speed or whatever, but I'm also going to skip those. Again, if I get one of them, no big deal, but I'm going to try not to here. This is the underwater area. I consider this area to be one of the harder ones because it's just a lot more bullet hell heavy than the other ones. There's also these crab creatures that I'm currently killing that are a huge pain in the ass, especially when I don't have my project. Oh God, I shouldn't have walked right into that one. I need to get my boomerang. That's the real problem here. So let me get it. Okay. Those crabs are interesting because they become invulnerable if you try and attack them and they sort of like burrow in. So 
you have to get them to attack you, but their range is pretty high, so trying to melee them is sometimes a tall order. Alright, so here we are, underwater level 2. If I mentioned it or not, the boomerang is the default starting weapon you get when you first pick up the game. You have to unlock all of the other ones. They're not hard to unlock, it just takes feathers which you gather by playing. But the boomerang is a great starting weapon because it doesn't take ammo like the other guns do. So while its range is limited, it's still pretty fun to use. And I'm honestly used to using all the other weapons that do have ammo, so it's kind of refreshing in a way to be able to use this boomerang where I know I can just keep using a projectile, even if its range is limited. It's really nice to be able to do that. I think my favorite weapon in this game is either the bomb or the crossbow. The crossbow is really fun just because it just fires with such velocity that it just feels really fun when you nail stuff with it. But I figured for a run like this, the boomerang was uh, perhaps a little more fair, for me anyway. We've almost finished out everyone on this level. Just gotta get rid of these two dudes. So I need to wait for this guy to attack, and then I can hit him. There we go. I call this area Candyland, not for any particular reason, except there's like sugary treats all around and like melons and stuff. This one has its own share of dangers. Ow. I think the scariest thing on the level is that little teacup down there, because if you get in their way, they sort of do a bullet hell thing in all directions. See that? That's really hard for me to get in close, but with the boomerang, it makes it a little bit easier, so. And the cool thing about it is the stages are all random, so in the, in the instance of this stage, it was really brief, but they're not always like that. Sometimes they're a lot bigger. So Candyland Stage 2 here has a mini boss on it, and I need to try to get, there he is, right in the corner, just incubating. And I need to get in close to him, because when he wakes up, the Melon King here, he will, here, let me just, oh, I just beat him up. He will spawn, like, an infinite number of melons that fly around the level. There's a certain point at when there's just too many melons on the screen, you have no hope of being able to get close to him. The strategy I figured out is just get him in a corner and just beat him up before you can spawn any melons. That's like the big problem with the dude. Just a couple more things and we should be done with this level. Just gotta take out this teacup here. Ow. Stuff just hurts. Okay, here we go. Moving on to what I call the Winter Wonderland. These skating guys have a tell. They they launch projectiles at you, obviously. And when they spin like that, that means they're revving up to uh, throw a projectile at you. So that's at least the tell that they have so you can know if they're about to uh, hit you with something. There's the things that are crawling on the ground there, which, oh, wow, that was bad. So one more hit from these dudes and my run is over. So hopefully it won't come to that. We will see. Huh? 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 Uh, no, no. So I'm using my dash where you have invincibility frames when you're in the middle of your dash. So I'm trying to use that to great effect to try and stay safe. Oh, God. Oh, God, that was it. All right, let's try that again. All right, run number two. We'll see how this goes. I have uh, I have all the faith in the world that we can have at least a good run at this. I was doing okay, and then I don't know what happened, but I think I got a little, yep, there we go. Let's try that again. We're not going to let this beat us, so let's just go through and just, I've already taken damage. <laughs> That's how you know the sign of a good run is when you, uh, you start out and immediately take damage. Thankfully, we've got extra hearts here, which we'll, we'll pick up. One of the nice things about the starting area here is you can actually, oh god, you can actually take quite a decent amount of damage here and recover from it. I think you recover health as you level, and when you level, it's when you pick up feathers and you have a little meter in the upper left corner where you see where that one is. There's like a little vine leaf thing right there, and that fills up over time. Oh god, oh, oh, this is it. This is not good. This is not great. This is not, well, I don't know. Let's, let's just keep going. There's a lot of times where you can actually recover in a run. Like, look at this. Already, like, I leveled up to level two there, which means I have two points to spend, I believe. My health is just inc- Oh, God. I just- I'm just- Why am I- Oh, no. Because those projectiles just get me every time. Come on, dude, in the corner there. Okay. I keep trying to start this thought. Let me- let me try and get this out, which is, um, in these first couple of levels, I mean, they can obviously make or break your run, but there is always a chance that you'll recover from it. Like, look at the roller coaster that this has been so far. I've gone from full health to one health, and then, like, like up again and now I'm like hovering at two health and if any of those projectiles hit me or if that guy in the bush hits me I believe he does three points of damage if he touches me like any of those guys in the bushes that's like a run oh do you see all those hearts right there give me those hearts give me those hearts as you can see the boomerang can pull hearts to you and so now I'm back at full strength see what a roller coaster right my strategy here is to try and clear out an area and see if we can't sort of strategically kind of just oh come on just empty out a space here so that I can always have a place to retreat I also want to be really careful on all of these corners here. When my boomerang is out, my attack damage goes from two damage to one damage. And that applies for if I lose the boomerang and it's just 
sitting on the ground somewhere, but it also applies if the boomerang is just in flight and I'm also punching stuff. So I need to make sure if I can, oh geez, a lot of stuff and I'm kind of out in the open. So, all right, I'm just gonna try and stay in the corner here and take out oh, all these books. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh man. So I just accidentally picked up a yellow orb right now, but we're just gonna run with it. If you start stacking the yellow orbs, I think eventually they give you speed. I can't remember if level one does. I don't think it does. I think right now it just adds to my uh, experience. Like it gives me more experience faster, but like the red orbs are health. Oh, I just woke up the conductor by getting too close to him. So now I got to watch out for all of these other instruments that are going to be launching stuff at us. But I figure this is a good compromise since I accidentally picked up an orb for it to be the yellow one because the red ones would give me health benefits and the blue ones would give me damage benefits, which obviously can be a run changer. But in the case of the yellow ones, like I just don't think it's quite as big a deal. And it's hard not to pick those things up sometimes. So even though I came into this level with full health, I'm a tad scared here because I have to figure out a way to methodically kill all this stuff without getting too close because one of those bubbles takes away two of my hit points. I only have so many chances to tank damage here. Getting hit once is one thing, but anything after that, like it starts to get scary because your invincibility window after being hit is not very long. As you might have said, oh God. Okay, so I would prefer not to go lower than four here. Doing a good job so far of just kind of like singling things out and trying to hit them because a lot of these creatures react when you get close to them. So you just got to be really careful about how you approach an area, especially with these guys here with their like odd oscillating bubbles. Uh, ooh, oh, 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 that was really close. I think his projectile got stuck on a rock, so he didn't hit me. That would have been not good. Yeah, this is the second of the two underwater levels before we head back to Candyland. Hopefully we can pull this one off, but uh, okay, okay. Whoop, uh, let's see, take this guy out. Okay, okay. I'm trying to find the best route to sort of whittle these guys down, and because of the rocks in the way, those things are gonna prevent my boomerang. See right there, like that. Like, it's preventing my boomerang from getting around, so I just have to be really, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All of this losing my boomerang would be fully prevented if I upgraded it, because then it'll just hug walls and come back to me no matter what. But because we're doing a, a no up upgrade run here. I just have to be really careful with that and just deal with when I drop it. Just these two guys left, I think. So that, this seems, oh, thank goodness. Okay. So now we're moving on to Candyland here. As mentioned before, my biggest dangers are these stupid little tea kettles jumping around because they do this like fanned out projectile stuff that I am just really, really bad at dealing with. There's a lot of these, like these red dudes too block, which is kind of a pain, but thankfully they are slow and don't seem really all that deadly. At least they haven't been for me. So I consider them sort of just like obstacles that I eventually have to deal with as long as I don't straight up just like walk into them. It's not really a problem. Like there's so many things in this game that act predictably, but it's still difficult to deal with them. Like, like this <laughs> right here, like I know how those melons work. And yet for some reason, oh God, it was just so pain to get through that. Level two of Candyland, we have to find the Melon King and take him out without touching any of the other, there he is, there he is. Okay, he's in the corner. Let's see if we can just take him out by just hitting, oh, come on. Oh, come on, where's he going? Okay, let's see if I can, okay, here we go, here we go, here, we oh. Oh God, now do you see what's happening? Like he's dropping melons and it's so hard to deal with him. Let's see. Okay, got him in a corner. Oh my God, he got away again. Come here. Oh, finally. Okay, we got him. We got him. Theoretically anyway, it's just a matter of cleanup. But as you can see from that, like once he gets going, he starts spamming these like melon creatures everywhere. It's just so easy to suddenly instantly die. I honestly have no idea how I survived that. And I don't know if I lost any health in all of that. Okay, can I get in there? And oh God, I just, one day, one day, maybe I won't take damage. Maybe on this guy? Uh, okay. Okay, come here. There we go. All right, on to Winter Wonderland. Let's see if we can hack this here. Oh, okay. This is not a good place. It put us in sort of like a middle ground choke point type thing. So as before, let's carve out on... Oh, really? Really? Did that thing clip through the wall? Now we're in sort of a bad situation again because one of their projectiles will kill me. In fact, I think if anything in this level touches me, it's going to kill me. So I have to be really careful. Oh, oh, ah, 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 ah. I'm trying to rely on my boomerang as much as possible because I don't want to get hit by these dudes. And I don't want to have to, oh God, oh God, uh, uh. I don't want to have to get close to these guys and punch them because that's just a recipe for me just taking damage in the face. And I can't, oh, that was risky, but I, I felt like I had to do it there. But like, I just need one health so that I can have three and I can at least have one buffer. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, now I have three health. I have to kind of move around a little bit. Okay, so now we're out in the open again, which is scary, but I'm trying to carve out this space and try to get these guys to come out. Okay, yeah, let's let's see if we can hide behind some of these walls here. Okay, oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, your turn. Watch out. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Okay. Whoa, oh, oh. 
<laughs> it's just so scary. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this level is at least they started me in sort of like a hallway that I have a lot of space to move around. And in general, okay, this is actually like a rather small area with a rather small population. Thank goodness. Over time, as you can see, I've sort of like climbed back up with the health here. Back up to five out of six, which is a much, much, much better place to be. Watch out. Okay, okay. Oh, man. So we just need to take out anything that... I mean, everything here still has a chance of being a sudden and immediate danger. Even those little candles. Oh, we did it. Okay, now on to the hardest part here. Let's see what we can do. All right, so this is kind of got a lot going on here, but I guess let's clear out this first part down here because I feel like anywhere the wizards are... Whoa, oh, huh. Huh. So those guys take four hits for me to kill because I have eight total hit points. And so I either need to hit them with four boomerang blasts or just punch them. All right, let's get in here. They will stop trying to snipe you if you hit them. That ruins their concentration or whatever. My logic here is I'm trying to do away with these guys first and deal with the wizards last. Because the wizards, when they drop their daggers... Here we go. See, the dagger right there. I'm going to have to be on my guard and dodge as soon as possible. And if I'm dealing with other stuff at the same time, there's just such a, a dodge... Okay. There's just such a wider chance that I won't be able to multitask my dodging and my fighting and all this other stuff. Uh, dodge. Okay. It's to my advantage to, if I can help it, single them out out and fight them only on their own. There we go. So let's get this guy out of the corner here. And as I'm sure you've seen, these knights, if you interrupt them or anything, they turn into their tornado and that's their attack. Okay, okay, ooh. All right, here we go, here we go. And now we gotta deal with this dagger, which I think, okay, up here, up here, got it. Okay, one more hit and he'll be dead. So we just need to, okay, come here, come here. There we go. We only have this one knight left here. There we go. Okay, one more hit should do it. Okay, after this, it's the final boss. Okay, okay, okay. 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 So, oh, so that started me not in a good place. It started me sort of out in the open with a bunch of snipers. So now I found this little corridor over here that I can use to hide in. Except I have one knight still in here, so I feel like, uh oh, come here, come here. Come here. Uh -huh. Let's take out that knight first, actually. Let's get rid of him so that we can sort of feel more uh, secured in our environment. So that takes him out. Now this is just a game of trying to whittle down all of these dudes. So, oh, oh, oh. Uh, I gotta be careful because I don't personally know if there is like a very ow. I don't know if there's like a tell that I can really rely on for the harps. Like they make a noise, but I don't know if I can use that noise to take them out quick enough. So I have to sort of just like assume that they might attack at any time and just get in there and try and do oh, 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 oh. The good news is we are slowly whittling everything down. So let's get this harp down out here. Oh, come on, dude. Okay, so one hit and that harp is dead. So let's take out the harp now. Come here, come here, come here. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's Let's take out the knight, actually. So let's let's bring him in. He gets stuck on the side, which is uh, kind of nice. And oh god, oh god. <laughs> okay, I'm grateful there's only the one wizard because multiple daggers is a huge pain. So now all we need to do is take this guy out. Okay, two hits and he's dead. So knock him down and dodge the dagger. Okay, and there we go. Now we need to just break the statue and go to the last boss. So uh, wish me luck here. Ah, hello there. I am the wall that stands between you and the heart of the dream. 76 Nightmare have perished before you, now prepare to join them. Hero holds out no more, got it. So the way this works is I have to knock down all of his shields, and then I can actually do damage to him. With the bomb, this is really hard because I can't spam this stuff, but with the boomerang... Oh god, okay, so this is what used to get me killed last time. Those daggers do two damage each, and I used to get into a rhythm where I just took damage from every single one. So I need to... Oh god, see, he's like that. Okay, so I just need to make sure that I'm dodging right when they're being thrown. Okay, and so now... The nice thing is, I can just keep spamming my boomerang to take out his shields and do two points of damage on him each time. So, okay, oh, cool, cool. I think I stunned him out of- Oh, oh, I did it, I did it! I dream a curse upon you, nightmare. Ah! Okay, so this is something they added. This is something that was added into the game. If I accept the curse, it adds like a modifier and I go back in. Or if I ascend forward, I finish the game. Let's go ahead and just finish the game. I'm like shaking from how, how much I didn't know if I'd be able, to be able to pull that off. So maybe next time we'll do a curse, but this time we're just gonna go to the end of the game here. Hey there, little star. Hi, you made it. My name is Let's Game It Out. I'm the heart of the dream. Hi, I'm a big red nightmare. Whoa, what are you doing here? You can't be here. This is a no nightmare zone. Kit, didn't you read the sign? I'm sorry, you'll have to go now. We're gonna slap this guy, just so you know. Dot, dot, dot. So that's how it is, huh? So be it. Let this be our final battle. Yeah, 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 here, take this. Whack. <laughs> funny every time. And we did it. Not only... 
Look at that, we just split the moon. Yeah, oh, oh, and all, <laughs> all the nightmares have been released. Ah, uh, there we go, Tyler McDermott, fantastic work as always. I really enjoy this game. So that was Night of the Blood Moon. We beat the game with just the boomerang, no upgrades whatsoever, except for that one yellow orb that I accidentally picked up, which doesn't really do all that much, really. But no pets, no upgrades at any point in the game. Maybe at some point we'll come back. We'll try this again with some curse modifiers or something like that. For now, I think that's gonna do it for this episode of Let's Game It Out. As always, I am Josh. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.